Now let's talk about something which is very important in terms of Android application development, which is the manifest file. All right. Let's first of all talk about the manifest file. All right. So what I necessarily mean is that this particular manifest file that I have for my application is the file that contains the metadata of the application. That is information about the application, information about the information itself. Right. So the manifest presents essential information about the application to the Android system. It tells you about the complete application to the Android system. Information the system must have. Just remember the lines here. All right, Eileen uh, says, what is metadata? Eileen, it's like uh, when I say metadata, I mean information about information. I say data about data. For example, I say I'm having 10 activities. All right. I'm having all those 10 activities included inside my manifest. So what I'm having is I'm having data about all the data that I have inside my application. So the manifest con file contains the various elements, the attributes, the class names, the va values, resource values and the string values. Let's take a look at the manifest that we have created the ad application. If you go here onto the manifest.xml, first of all, I'll let you all take a look at it here. Everybody, just give it a good look from top to bottom. All right. So what I'm having is, it is the schema. First of all, the manifest file has got a schema for Android. Then we have a package. So the package name is the one that we decided when we were creating the application. Everybody remembers this. When we were creating this application, we decided on the package, then the version code. All right, so let's take an example. I created my application, uploaded it onto the Google Play. Now I am creating or working on another application version. So what is going to happen in this case? Will I be incre incrementing my version here or not? All right, so this is the first version, so I keep it as version 1. But if I try to create another installation or say I want to upload another version of the application, I'll just mark this version code as 2 so that the Google Play knows that I have got another update for this particular APK. All right, version name, again the version and version code and the version name go side by side. So the version code, if it is 1, the version name will be 1.0. If it is one point, if it is two, it will be two point oh, something like that. You remember we set up few parameters: the main SDK version and the target SDK version when we were creating this project. Everybody remembers that. So the main version is API version eight. The target version is the API version sixteen. All right, Rahul says version name change when we have small patching. I would see when uh, I would say it when we have some enhancements done and we have created another set of a version of the application. Rahul, then it changes. Then we finally come to the application tag. All right, then we come to the application tag. What it says is that the application can be allowed as a backup to true. So whenever a user, for example, user what a user does is he purchases or buys another phone. All right. When he buys another phone, he tries to use the same Gmail account, and this will actually ask for the user that this application is installed on your device. Do you want to have this application installed on the same device again? All right. Then why not version two? At present, uh, Rahul, this is the first version of the application that we have created. So we have marked it as version one. If we'll be creating another version after some enhancements and uploading it onto the Google Play, then we'll be marking the version as 2 and the version name as 2.0. All Let me know if this is clear to you. We see some versions as 1.2. So they are, uh, all right, they are the minor versions, Rahul. They are the minor versions, all right? So here you will be using 1.1 instead, all right? 
you will be using 1.1 instead. So it is like a minor version and a major version release that you have to take care of. Then you see an application launcher icon, the label of the application, what is the application name. So if you see first Android is my application name. The theme that applies to the application, we chose a black holo light theme. So that is what applies to the complete application. Now you see an activity. Everybody remembers that I created a single activity inside my application package. Can everybody remember that? Now see here something which is very different here. What am I having here? I call this intent filters. I call this particular section intent filters. Usha, can you just tell me about what exactly is the uh, process of uh, using a public static void main in Java applications? Why we have a PSVM in every Java application? Usha, this is a question for you. Everybody can also respond back. If everyone knows about it, they can also give it a try. Not specific to Usha. A uh, public static void main starts executing from that method. Can I uh, call this an entry point to the application, Usha? That's correct. Eileen, uh, uh, I know, I know you understand this, but I'm just asking for to everyone. All right. So when I say it is the starting point of the application, similarly, I need a single activity to be shown as the startup of the application. Am I right here? Am I wrong here? If I'm having 10 activities in my application, I need to have a single activity as the launcher activity for my application. Am I right here? Am I wrong here? And similarly, if I say, and if I say, I have, I need to have multiple activities as starting points. Can I think about it like that? Alright, so just wanted to tell you all that whenever I have an active application wherein I'm having 10 activities, alright, so I'll be having just one single intent filter which contains these following parameters. The reason I was telling you about this is I need only one intent filter that has to be associated with an activity. Alright, so you see an intent filter with the name main and the launcher. So when I say it, I call an activity a launcher, what I mean is that this is the first one that gets launched and also the main one. I hope everybody understands what is this intent filter doing here? Specifying which activity has to be the launcher and the main one. So this, uh, this particular manifest file, if you all remember I quoted a point here which said that this file is the one that is getting read even before the application gets installed onto the device. Can anybody think about all these, from all these parameters, what all parameters might be read before the application file gets installed? You all have access to all the manifest parameters here. Can you tell me what all parameters will be checked up before the, even before the installation? What is in this file that might be checked up before the installation? Rahul says the version, that is very good Rahul, that is one of the parts. And uh, Eileen says the OS, that's correct, the min SDK version and the target SDK version. Alright, let me tell you about in terms of precedence. I would first of all say check the min SDK version. Whether my application supports or say whether my application has got support for the OS that is it is being installed on. Alright, I hope everybody understands what I'm saying here. So that is what is being done here. As I said, manifest gets read for the very first time, before, even before the installation and the point why it is getting done is just to check the OS versions. Alright, 